where we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant is Father Bell, and our homeless is the Ingrid's. Please stand by our hand. Forgive our sins so that we are able to forgive one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you strengthen our faith and renew our hope. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you enlighten us by the word of God and nourish us with the bread of eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. 
Lord said to Abram, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then the Lord said to Abram, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But Abram said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? The Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought the Lord all these and cut them in two laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join in imitating me, 
and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, Stand firm, my beloved, in the Lord, in his way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly he saw two other men, Moses and Elijah, talking to Jesus. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his exodus, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down in sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory in the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But Peter did not know what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And the disciples kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. We have in our first reading the very beginning of our faith. We have the story of Abram, who believed in the true God, who believed in the true God and was given a covenant that would allow his descendants to be as numerous as the stars. And from him, we would come, the Jews would come, and uh, and, uh, the Muslims would come. And at the beginning, to as a sign of this covenant, um, he did what a contract, what a covenant would do at that that time. And, and a covenant is an unbreakable contract that would, that would bind God for all time. He asks Abram to, to, to take these animals of sacrifice, to split them in half, to separate them, and then God appears as a fire between these two. Now you have to know the language of the time. These covenants, these eternal bonds between two peoples would be, would be um, celebrated this way in that they would walk between these two piles of flesh, these two animals, making an agreement that if they ever broke the covenant, they would be like those animals, that they would perish. Now, who is the one who actually did the walking through? It was God. This is actually a unilateral uh, covenant. God gives this freely to us, this this, uh, great promise to be with us to the thousands generation. We have in our gospel the very familiar reading of the Transfiguration. Um, we, we have this read every sec- every on the second Sunday of, of every Lent 
three different versions. We go through them three, one, one after the other. And just so you know where this is in the sequence of Luke, this is just after Peter has made his declaration of his belief in who Christ was. If you remember at one point, Jesus asked his followers, so who did the people say I am? And uh, some people say you're Elijah, some people say you're one of the prophets, some people say you're John the Baptist raised again. And, and it's Peter who, who speaks to Christ and he says, no, you are the chosen one, you are the Messiah of God. And so now we have these three, these three uh, apostles, um, John, Peter, and James, going up the mountain and being presented, uh, and, and they're being presented with the revelation of the true identity of Christ by the actions of God. We, we see, first of all, the presence of these two great leaders in the Jewish faith, Moses, who had given the law, and Elijah, who was the greatest of the prophets. And, and Elijah, by tradition, never died. He ascended directly to heaven. And so the apostles are giving these great figures of the faith in Jesus' presence. And then we see the transfiguration happen. Christ's face shines as bright as the sun. His clothes take on a dazzling white. And then the voice comes from the heavens. A cloud descends. The voice comes from the heaven. This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Now, if you remember, this is very much like what happened when, uh, John the ba when uh, Christ presented himself to John the Baptist. And God's voice comes out of the cloud, and a, and a dove appears as a, as a sign of grace, again announcing that this this is my this is my son. Now this is a very glorious scene, but it also has the foreshadowing of Calvary in it. Moses and Elijah are talking in this particular translation about his ex exodus in Jerusalem. In in other translations of the text, it talks about his passing in Jerusalem. This son of God is going to be killed, just as he had been, just as he'd been telling Peter and the apostles bef before. And these three apostles who were chosen to go up with him to see this glory revealed are also the three that are going to be with him in the garden at Gethsemane on Mount of Olives when Jesus is preparing for his passion the next day when he cries those bitter tears. So you have glory going, leading eventually to the cross. This was a hard message for the, for the disciples to hear, that Christ's glory would come through his death. He, they couldn't understand this. What kind of leader was this? But it is true. In Christ's life, no Easter without a Calvary first. And this is also true of our lives. There is no heaven until we pass from this life. And during this life, it's not heaven on earth. Most of the time, it is a life lived with its difficulties as well. We do have to suffer in our lives to receive our share of the Easter promise. But as Paul says in the second reading, he says our citizenship now as Christians is in heaven. Not that we uh, don't live fully in this life and we're asked to fully know God and to develop our, our closeness to God and to, be, and to love and to share, to care for, you, for each other. But, but eventually we are drawn from this life to the next life. I brought out the baptistry today. You see this in front of you. We don't have a baby to be baptized yet unless we have someone ready. But uh, because I want to talk about you and your baptism. Um, during the course of baptisms, we have a, a little ceremony in the baptism called the clothing with the white garment. And what's the usual color that children are presented to a baptism with? White. The color is? White. white. And what does white symbolize? Purity. purity. White symbolizes purity. And everyone at a baptism has exactly the same answers. And so at the moment after we baptize the children, and I come to this, and before I say the prayer I'm going to read to you, I just stop for a second and I say, now, we have one, two, or three children presented in front of you. They're all in these beautiful white gowns, chosen in love by their families. They are as pure as they'll ever be in this life. I mean, they've just been baptized. They're incapable of committing a mortal sin. And then I turn to everyone, because baptisms are for those who are with the family as well as the, the child. And I say, those of you who are older in this room, what would you give to be as pure and innocent as these children again? And I usually feel, hear this kind of sigh 
when you think about your own life and its difficulties and your struggles. Imagine being back that way. Well, here's, here's the good news for you. That's your life in heaven. As Father Bob says to the kids, you get a big shower when you leave here, and that's exactly what you're going to be like. Plus the love that you've experienced here, plus the friendships you have, and the, and the love that you're going to be reunited in, in heaven. This is the prayer. And so this is as true for you today as it was on the day that you were baptized. You have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. See in the white garment of your baptism the outward sign of your deep Christian dignity. With your friends and family and the church to help you, by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. We are exiles here on earth. This isn't our destiny, our final death destiny. This is our real nature that I'm going to read to you. We are born of the union of the dust of the earth and of the breath of God. That's the second creation story. We are given this life to draw us towards each other and to draw us closer to God so that we can share with each other and more importantly, we can share love with God. We are raised, we, over the history of humanity, we've been raised to two great unions. The first was the covenant of Abraham that was, that was where a cho a people were chosen and were promised eternal fidelity by God. And our second covenant, the greater one, is the one where Christ said, I will love you enough that I will show you on a cross how much I love you. And that salvation is not just for one particular um, people that live from one river to another in the Middle East. It's for all people for all time. And then finally, after the last breath of this life, we get to take our next breath in the world to come. Life is a time, Lent is a time to spend in contemplation, in prayer, and in charity as we reflect on our lives this year. But more importantly, it's a time to prepare to celebrate in a richer way this year than last year, the mystery and glory of Easter. This is when Christ, the Son of God, redeemed humanity for all time. May this Lent give you a deeper sense of your dignity as a descendant of Abraham, an adopted child of God, a sister or a brother of Christ, and a citizen to come of heaven. disfigured by poverty, violence, hunger, suffering, or war. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the victims of the invasion of Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the protection of all from the COVID pandemic. We pray especially for an increase in the sharing of resources with the poorer regions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all our sick relatives and friends and for those listed in our bulletin sick list, especially Thomas Gray, who is newly added. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our loved ones who have died, those who died this past week, especially Father Antoni Mandrella, and those who rest in our cemeteries. For all these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for our own special needs and for those who have asked us to pray for them and for those who have known to pray for them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, give us a love for what you command and a longing for what you promise so that amid this world's struggles our hearts may remain fixed on the world of everlasting joy. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told his disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifests to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Oh. 
you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. At the 
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, 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 hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, us not to temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Sylvia to come forward to give a little announcement. Good evening. I'm Sylvia. I'm usually up there or in there. But um, today I want to talk to you guys about a program we're planning to kickstart. Um, so we're starting a youth ministry at St. John's. Uh, myself and Maddie, who will be here tomorrow, will be running it um, with the help of Father Bob and both deacons. Um, so EDGE is basically the program that we're planning on starting for now here, um, and it's a program for kids in grades 5 to 8. Um, EDGE actually isn't just running here, it runs in 80 parishes throughout the diocese. Um, it's a fun, solid way for young people to grow in their faith and develop as a Catholic, and it's a great way for young people to get their questions answered and meet many new people that will help them grow. So the goal is to create a community and a family amongst our core team and our youth, um, if you'd like to receive emails from us containing updates, we will be standing by the door after Mass with cards with the youth ministry email. And we kindly invite you to email us and we'll add you to our email list, which is going to operate very similarly to the way that Father Bob's bulletin email runs. And we'll also be hosting a parent session with John McMullen. Um, he's the director of Catholic Youth Ministry. And it'll be next weekend after the 1145 Mass, which is March 20th. Um, here, parents, grandparents, and community members are more than welcome to learn about the program. Thank you. It's great to 
see our young people getting involved in a special way, especially with youth ministry. Of course, we have young people re doing readings and all kinds of wonderful things, like altar serving and so many different things. So we're grateful for all of that. Um, however, it's a new program, so it's going to be kind of neat. Uh, just a reminder that on Friday nights at 7 p.m. during Lent, we do the Stations of the Cross. You may want to check those out. They're a great experience here. Also, um, if you haven't checked out the best Lent ever, there's a wonderful little thing you can hook up on uh, Dynamic Catholic, and they'll send you a little three-minute uh, video every day for reflection, which is really quite something. You may want to check that out. Also, the um, uh, Cardinal has uh, asked us to remind you that the St. Patrick's Mass at the Cathedral will be on Thursday, March 17th at 10 a.m., so you may want to, uh, if you want to be involved in that. Also, uh, I think it'll probably be live streamed too, in case people want to just live stream it. So you've heard about Edge, and of course the parents will be invited next Sunday uh, after 11.45 to kind of hear a little bit about it and see what it's all about. And of course, if there's young people who want to help volunteer or people who want to volunteer, let us know. Um, it'll run generally the first and third Sunday of the month, and it'll be between 1.15 and 3 o'clock, right after the, um, the um, 11.45 Mass. Also, please remember, today, it says you're supposed to do this at 2 a.m. Oh, yeah, 2 a.m. You're supposed to move your clock forward, so you may want to keep that in mind, spring forward, fall back. So um, uh, it's a good thing because Daylight Savings reminds us that, guess what? Warm weather's coming, more sunshine, that's good news. So I'm very, very <laughs> grateful for that. And uh, after this last kind of burst of winter, I'm hoping it's our last, last. But uh, we'll see how it goes. But thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Bruce, for preaching for us. And Sylvia and Anthony for singing. There's that, that male voice up there, Anthony on the guitar. Really does a nice job. So I thank him for that. And of course, Victoria for reading and uh, our Eucharistic ministers. And um, we'll keep you up to date on everything that's going on um, as things happen. Um, it's my understanding that on March uh, 20th, we'll be stopping, or March 21st, we'll be stopping the mask rules. Um, now that doesn't mean everybody's going to stop wearing a mask. I mean, I'm a cancer patient, so you might not see me not wearing a mask. So just keep that in mind. Um, I think the Eucharistic ministers are going to be encouraged to wear a mask because they have such close contact with people. Uh, I think it's gonna, not going to be mandatory because but we want to keep you safe. So um, if anyone, if you come into church and someone's still got a mask on, be patient, relax. Because some people have all kinds of physical conditions you don't know about. And I'll tell you what, if you want to ask them, how are you doing? Because the older I get when someone asks me that question, boy, I can go off forever right now I'm doing it. <laughs> I don't think you want to hear the story. <laughs> so be patient with each other. And have a blessed, glorious, and wonderful week. <laughs> Let us stand in prayer. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads and open your hearts. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed, he showed in his body to the amazement of his apostles through the transfiguration. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. And have a blessed week.